Hello everyone. Uh, this course covers complete elementary biology part 1 and uh, this will help students who are appearing for various competitive exams like NEET, AP Biology, SAD Biology, Praxis Biology, Regent Exams, etc. And this will also help students in their academic course class 11th. And in this video, we will be discussing biomolecule proteins. We have already discussed biomolecules, basics and carbohydrate, lipids, amino acids in the previous videos. And if you have any doubts and questions, please comment in the box below. And for more videos on biomolecules, please refer to the series. So now let's see what are proteins. Proteins are large sized heteropolymeric macromolecule having one or more of polypeptides and what are polypeptides they are chains of amino acids we know that this is a polypeptide and it is made up of amino acids sometimes the term polypeptide is used interchangeably with the protein so we we may call it a polypeptide or a protein However, a single polypeptide must be at least 150 amino acid long in order to qualify for the term. Now, proteins are the bodybuilders of organisms. So, proteins are like machines that make all living things, whether virus, bacteria, butterflies, jellyfish, plants or human function. The human body consists of around 100 trillion cells and each cell has thousands of different proteins. Now proteins are the most abundant and most varied of the macromolecules of the cells and they constitute about 50% of their dry weight. And what is the dry weight of a cell? The dry weight of the cell is the weight left when their water content has been removed and a bacterial cell has 1000 to 2000 types of proteins. Now each type of cell has unique proteins and closely related species have many similar proteins while unrelated species they have fewer common proteins. So what is the benefit of this by studying the proteins of various species? So now this protein proximity shows evolutionary relationships. And these are the various examples of the molecular weights of proteins. For example, insulin, it has a molecular weight of 5733. So as proteins are macromolecules, they are not freely soluble in water and they form colloidal complex. So chemically a protein um, is made up of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur. But some proteins additionally contains phosphorus, iron and some other elements. Proteins are variously folded linear heteropolymers of amino acids. The linear polymers of amino acid is known as polypeptide. These are amino acids and it forms a polypeptide. Amino acid, peptide and this forms a protein. A protein may have one polypeptide and is known as monomeric proteins. For example, myoglobin and ribonuclease. They have only one polypeptide and in case of insulin it has two polypeptides chain A chain B in case of hemoglobins we have four polypeptide chains this is alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2 so we have two alphas and two beta chains in hemoglobin or more for example in case of ribulose biphosphate carboxylase we have 24 polypeptide chains that makes a, this whole protein 
and 72 in case of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. A protein having two or more polypeptide is multimer or multimeric protein and the common multimers are dimers, trimers, tetramers, pentamers, decamers. So a polypeptide chain contains a few to few hundreds of amino acid residues. These are amino acid residues. They are 21 and 30 in two polypeptides of human insulin. So as we just saw the structure of insulin, it has two chains, A chain, B chain and one has 21 amino acid and the other chain has 30 amino acids. The amino acids are linked serially by peptide bone. What are peptide bone? CO NH and it is formed between an amino group NH2 and amino group of one amino acid and carboxylic group of the adjacent one. Now this is very important the sequence. The sequence of amino acid present in a polypeptide is specific for a particular protein. For example, I have this protein insulin and these are the various amino acids linked together to form a polypeptide chain and the sequence of amino acid. For example, this is maybe alanine. Take any example and this is some other amino acid. This is third, fourth. The sequence is very important. The specificity of a particular protein is because of the sequence of amino acids present in the polypeptide. The distinctive sequence of amino acid units is governed by the codon sequence of the gene that controls its formation. So what are codon sequence? <coughs> These are the codons. Codon is a sequence of 3 DNA or RNA nucleotides that corresponds with the specific amino acid during protein synthesis. For example, this is a codon sequence CCC. It corresponds to the amino acid proline. So these three nucleotides will correspond a specific amino acid and these amino acids will form a polypeptide chain. And the specific sequence of these amino acid is important for the specificity of proteins. Only 20 amino acids are used in the synthesis of all types of proteins. So we have 20 amino acid in total. We already discussed about amino acids in the last video. Now this is similar to the formation of innumerable words from a limited number of alphabets like we have A to Z. We can make innumerable number of words. So likewise we have 20 amino acid and these 20 amino acids are used in the synthesis of all types of proteins. In a polypeptide of only 100 amino acid residues, there is possibility of 20 raised to power 100 arrangements or types of polypeptide. For example, there are 20 amino acids in a polypeptide. So how many different types of polypeptides can be formed? It's 20 raised to the power 20 because this polypeptide has a 20 amino acid residues. Collagen is the most abundant protein of animal world and it is found in bone, muscles, skin, tendons. The main function of this protein is strength and structure. Rubisco. Rubisco is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase is not only the most abundant protein in plants but also the whole biosphere. 
सो दिस इज द मोस्ट अबंडेंट प्रोटीन ऑफ द बायोस्फीयर बायोलॉजिस्ट स्टडी प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर अप टू फोर लेवल्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड वॉट आर दीज फोर लेवल्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी टर्शरी एंड क्वार्टनरी सो फर्स्ट इज द प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर सो वट यू मीन बाई दिस प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर इट इज सिंपली जस्ट द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ अमीनो एसिड इन अ पॉलीपेप्टाइड चेन सो दिस इज द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड इट एंड दिस इंक्लूड्स द नंबर एंड द सीक्वेंस ऑफ अमीनो एसिड इन ईच पॉलीपेप्टाइड नाउ स्पेसिफिक अमीनो एसिड्स डेटामाइन द प्लेसेज वेयर पोलीपेप्टाइड इज टू बेंड और फोल्ड वेयर द डिफरेंट लेंथ विल बी अट्रैक्टेड टू ईच अदर फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द अमीनो एसिड बिकॉज द अमीनो एसिड डिटमिनस द प्लेस वेयर द पोलीपेप्टाइड इज टू बेंड सो दिस इज द अमीनो एसिड एंड देयर इज द बेंड एंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू एडजस्टेंट पेप्टाइड बोन इज पॉइंट थ्री फाइव नैनोमीटर so now this is the distance between two adjacent peptide bone the distance is 0.35 nanometers now conventionally the left end of the primary protein structure is represented by amino acid and the right hand is represented by last amino acid so last is represented by c and on the left side it is represented by n next is the secondary structure in this structure we will see that there is a relationship between amino acids for example this is a this is a polypeptide chain and these are the various amino acids so there is a relationship between this amino acid and this amino acid and there is a formation of hydrogen bonds between them so it is the development of new steric relationship of amino acids present in a linear sequence inside the polypeptides now some of the new relationships are of regular nature and give periodicity to the structure and what are the three types alpha beta and collagen helix alpha and beta first and second type of secondary structures discovered in the protein that's why they are named like this in alpha helix polypeptide chain is coiled spirally generally in the right hand manner at places the helix is regular forming random coils it looks like a coil now the helix is stabilized by the hydrogen bonds that are formed between oxygen of carboxylic group of one amino acid residue and the nh group of the next fourth amino acid residue so the hydrogen bond is formed between co group and nh group actually all the main chain that is co and nh groups are hydrogen bonded alpha helical coiled secondary structure is found in several proteins for example keratin keratin is found in hair myosin is found in muscles tropomyosin both in muscles epidermin skin fibrin blood clot two or more polypeptides can further coil around each other to form cables and this give rise to a helical strand in beta pleated secondary structures two or more polypeptides are interconnected by hydrogen bonds and a sheet is produced instead of fiber or rod as in alpha helix therefore this secondary structure is often called pleated sheet or beta pleated sheets so this looks like a sheet this looks like a 
sheet or a sheet like structure these are the different polypeptides and these are connected by a and these are connected by hydrogen bond giving a sheet like structure now adjacent strands of polypeptide may run in the same direction that is they are known as parallel that is they are parallel example beta sheet of beta keratin or they run in the opposite direction anti parallel beta sheet for example for fibroin of silk now for example here look at this structure this is an anti parallel polypeptide strands they run in the opposite direction anti parallel in some cases single polypeptide may show alpha helix in some portion and bend to form two or more parallel strands with beta pleated structure in other parts so common example is ribonuclease so it has both alpha and beta pleated sheet so beta pleated proteins are more extended they are more extended than the ones having alpha helix collagen that is the most abundant protein in our body ramachandran discovered that there are generally three strands of three strands or polypeptide coiled around one another in case of collagen now this is a collagen helix three strands of polypeptide are coiled around each other the coil is strengthened by the hydrogen bond between nh group of glycine residue for example this is a glycine residue of one strand and the ch of other two strands so hydrogen bond is formed between nh group and oxygen of carboxylic group there is also a locking effect with the help of proline and hydroxyproline residues now let's come to the tertiary structure in st tertiary structure we will see a lot of bending and folding of various types to form shapes like spheres rods or fibers it further brings new steric relationships of amino acids especially those which are far apart in the linear sequence for example this was the linear sequence and there are the these are the am amino acids so in case of tertiary structure we will see a lot of folding and bending these amino acids those were far apart in the linear structure they are now closer to each other the active sites of the protein are also often brought towards the surface so the active sites are formed by the tertiary structure certain other side chains are brought interior to the protein there are certain proteins where the uh, side chains are for example this is the side chain this is brought interior to the protein and a protein often requires another protein with another protein known as chaperones for the development of tertiary structure so what are the bones that stabilize this uh, this uh, tertiary structure these are the hydrogen bone ionic bone 
wonder wall interactions covalent bond and hydrophobic bonds now let us look at the hydrogen bond so this is formed between the h of nh and oxygen of carboxyl group and ionic bonds are formed between the ions look at this the positive ion and the negative ion of the carboxyl group hydrophobic interactions are formed between this groups these groups these hydrocarbon chains and a covalent bond is formed for example this is disulfide bond disulfide bond a covalent bond is formed between these two sulfur atoms for example this was the cysteine amino acid and this was also cysteine so a bond is formed between the sulfur of these two amino acids and finally these are the wonder wall interactions so tertiary structure gives the protein this 3d structure if we look at this it will give a 3d structure to the protein in protein structure covalent bonds are the strongest they are of two types there are of two types peptide bonds and disulfide bond you have to remember these both peptide bonds and disulfide bonds ionic bonds or electrostatic bonds occur due to the attractive forces between oppositely charged ionized groups for example this anion the negatively charged is an anion and a positively charged is a cationic group so ionic bonds are always formed between the ions between attractive and an attractive force between oppositely charged ionized groups hydrogen bond developed due to the sharing of h positive or proton by two electronegative atoms and wonder wall it develops wonder wall interactions develop with charge fluctuations between two closely packed groups for example this was the one group and this was the second group so the force of uh, interaction between these two groups is the wonder wall interaction hydrophobic is formed between two non polar groups and this helps in excluding water in that area and increases compaction the bonds thus formed can easily be broken by various factors for example high energy radiations if we uh, give uh, if we give this tertiary structure high energy radiations or high temperature drastic changes in the ph or salts of heavy metals the tertiary structure will degrade the tertiary structure of this protein it will degrade when they are under such circumstances high temperature changes in the ph salt of heavy metals high radiations and this process of degrading the tertiary structure is known as denaturation denaturation proteins can easily be precipitated this is the precipitation it can easily be precipitated or coagulated by several chemicals and low temperature when you provide this protein to low temperature the proteins will coagulate they will come together they will they will form a coagulate in some cases removal of denaturing agent for example if we were providing certain denaturing agent for example maybe certain salts so the proteins will coagulate but in some cases this removal of the denaturing agent causes the reestablishment of bonds required for the maintenance of tertiary structure so when in case when we remove these salts the protein tertiary structure will be reestablished the structure will be reestablished and this phenomena is known as renaturation so we have two phenomena in case of tertiary structures in in case of proteins 
denaturation and renaturation so when a coagulate is formed in case of denaturation the tertiary structure is lost and when we remove these denaturing agents the tertiary structure is reestablished and that is known as renaturation now comes the quaternary structure this is found only in multimeric protein so what are multimeric proteins proteins having multiple polypeptide chains and each polypeptide develops its own tertiary structure and functions as a subunit of protein so this act as a subunit of protein the different subunit chains fit or packed together to give the conformation this is for example this is the hemoglobin it has four polypeptides two alpha and two beta now comes the properties first is variety there are thousands of proteins present in each organism and this large variety is due to the specific arrangement of amino acids this is the specific arrangement of amino acids in their chains for example 100 amino acid can form 20 raised to the power 100 types of polypeptides as there are 20 different amino acids so the types of polypeptide formed will be 20 raised to the power 100 next is the specificity this is very important each species has certain specific proteins that are not found in others for example this is a species 1 and this is a species 2 so there are certain proteins that are present in 1 and 2 that are not found in other so closely related species share several common proteins for example these two species of monkeys are closely related so you will see that the both of these species have a lot of proteins that are common in them and number of common proteins decreases with the increase in the dissimilarity between species now this principle is used in bringing out evolutionary relationships amongst various groups of plants and animals so this will tell us like for example we have species 1 and species 2 by looking at just the proteins of both of these two species we can determine how closely these two species are large size molecules proteins are large size molecules with a mini with a minimum molecular weight of adrenocortropin to a maximum molecular weight of pyruvate dehydrogenase colloids being large size so many protein they function as colloids they form a colloidal solution reactivity so because of the intra chain intra chain and inter chain bonding and folding bonding and folding a protein comes to have a particular specific configuration with the specific reactive group and this specificity provides functional diversity to the proteins for performing different cellular activities for example enzymes enzymes are specific due to the proteinaceous nature likewise antibodies they are complex glycoproteins which attach to particular pathogen and their toxins for their immobilization now certain bacterial toxins bacteria releasing toxins so these toxins are also proteinaceous in nature they affect specific tissues and organs and these are proteinaceous in nature the toxins the bacterial toxins now similarly membrane based proteins they have reactive sites for certain nutrients so this is cell membrane cell membrane has reactive sites for certain proteins 
सेल मेम्ब्रेन डू नॉट अलाउ परमिएशन टू प्रोटीन्स दे कैन हाउ एवर पास आउट वर्डली एंड इन वर्डली थ्रू एक्सोसाइटोसिस लुक ही इन द पिक्चर दिस इज एक्सोसाइटोसिस द वेसिकल लिविंग द साइटोप्लाजम एंड एंडोसाइटोसिस दैट इज वेसिकल फॉर्मिंग इन साइड नॉर्मली एवरी सेल सिंथिसाइज इट्स ओन प्रोटीन्स फ्रॉम अमीनो एसिड्स सो लाइक अमीनो एसिड्स प्रोटीन्स आर एम्फोटेरिक दैट इज दे हैव पॉजिटिवली चार्ज एंड नेगेटिवली चार्ज एंड्स डी नेचुरेशन फंक्शनल थ्री डायमेंशनल फॉर्म ऑफ प्रोटीन इज द नेटिव स्टेट दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस स्टेट इज नेटिव स्टेट ऑफ द प्रोटीन दैट इज द फंक्शनल थ्री डायमेंशनल एंड दिस स्टेट इज मेंटेन बाय स्पेसिफिक बोन्स दैट forms its quaternary tertiary secondary structures and these bones can easily be broken by high temperature high energy radiations soap disinfectant detergents alcohol etc and the phenomena is known as denaturation next is reaction in the aqueous medium a protein possesses both cationic that is positively charged and anionic groups that is negatively charged groups there are several of such groups on the same molecule this is a protein molecule and it has several positively and negatively charged sides depending upon the amino acids carrying positively charged or negatively charged groups so a chemical like protein carrying both positive and negative charges is called amphoteric ampho means both that is positively charged and negatively charged ionization of cationic and anionic groups depends on the ph of the medium so ph of the medium will determine the number of positively charged or negatively charged groups on the protein at specific ph a protein may be electrically neutral because the number of positive charge is exactly balanced by the number of negatively charged positive charge equals negatively charged so it becomes electrically neutral this ph is known as isoelectric point iso means same so isoelectric point at physiological ph of 7.4 a protein may have more of negative charges and such proteins are basic proteins and they are rich in basic amino acid like lysine and arginine histones that are associated with dna are also basic proteins this is very important histone proteins are basic proteins acidic proteins have more of positive charges they are rich in acidic amino acid like aspartic acid and glutamic acid most of the blood proteins are acidic in nature there is a third category of neutral proteins which have their isoelectric point at 7.4 ph so these are the neutral proteins so proteins can be classified on the basis of shape function and constitution so first on the basis of shape proteins are divided into two fibrous and globular fibrous protein are thread like proteins which occur singly or in groups they are tough non enzymatic and structural proteins they form the structures so fibrous protein generally possess secondary structure they are insoluble in water and the examples are keratin of skin and hair they are fibrous proteins some of the fibrous proteins are contractile in nature so contractile means they help in contraction and relaxation for example myosin protein of muscles and elastin of connective tissue globular proteins are rounded in outline contractibility is absent they cannot contract or relax this property is absent and the final structure is tertiary or quaternary globular proteins can be enzymatic or non enzymatic small globular protein are mostly soluble in water 
they are soluble in water they are not coagulated by heat example histone proteins water solubility decreases but heat coagulability increases with the increase in the size as the size of the protein increases the solubility in water decreases but the coagulation property that is coagulability increases with the increase in the size examples are egg albumin serum globulins glutelins that is found in wheat rice they are the examples of large globular proteins which get coagulated by heat so when you heat when you give heat the proteins in it gets coagulated now second on the basis of function so depending upon the functions protein can be classified into enzymatic and non enzymatic the non enzymatic proteins can be structural storage protective hormonal or transport first is enzymatic proteins they are the proteins which function as enzymes either directly for example in case of amylase and pepsin a protein alone function as a enzyme or in conjunction with the non protein part known as cofactor for example dehydrogenase the protein function with the help of this non protein part and this non protein part is the cofactor which is required for its functioning and this is the protein part enzymatic proteins are usually globular in shape structural or protoplasmic proteins they form part of cellular structures and their product example colloidal complex of protoplasm cell membrane contractile proteins structural proteins of hair and nails in shape structural proteins can be globular or they can be fibrous next is reserve or storage proteins they occur as a food reserve mostly in seeds eggs or milk and they are usually globular in shape so depending upon their solubility reserve proteins are of four types albumin globulin prolamins and glutelins and the third comes on the basis of constitution so on the basis of their constitution proteins are of three types simple conjugate or derived first is simple protein simple proteins are made up of amino acid only additional known amino groups are absent so what are the examples histones protein that are found in the dna and the keratin conjugated proteins have known amino prosthetic group attached to it so these conjugated proteins have prosthetic groups so depending upon the type of prosthetic group conjugate proteins are of several types so now let us look at the examples for example nucleoprotein in this the prosthetic group that is the known protein part is the dna so nucleoprotein is a protein that has nucleo that is dna or rna as a prosthetic group that is known protein part attached to it other examples are flavoprotein that has fmn fad hemoglobin heme is the this is very important heme is the known protein part or the prosthetic group derived proteins are obtained from proteins through denaturation coagulation and breakdown and the examples are metaprotein proteosis and fibrin fibrin is formed from the precursor fibrinogen fibrinogen and fibrinogen is an asymmetric plasma protein so now let us see the meaning of denaturation coagulation denaturation of proteins is the disruption of secondary and tertiary structure denaturation is the changing of properties of a molecule while coagulation is the action of converting the liquid state of the molecule into the solid or semi solid state by sticking molecules together and a common example of 
coagulation is when you add lemon juice to the milk it causes milk proteins to clump together to make coagulate next category is on the basis of quality so on the basis of quality the proteins are of two types complete proteins and incomplete proteins so first complete proteins these proteins contain all the essential amino acids that are required by us humans and the examples are milk egg meat and fish soya also possesses nearly complete protein and they are also known as first class proteins next is incomplete proteins the proteins which lack one or more essential amino acids they are also known as second class proteins and example most of the plant proteins are incomplete proteins now let us look at the functions of protein first is the protective structures now fibrous protein keratin keratin is an important protein that forms external protective structures of animals for example nails hooves scales hair feathers horny layer of skin etc they are all made up of protein keratin now silkworms protect themselves in cocoon stage by silk fibers silk fibers and these silk fibers are built up of protein fibroin another example is spider webs they are also made up of proteins next are the defense proteins immunoglobulins or antibodies are the proteins that are produced by lymphocytes so lymphocytes are the wbcs they are one of the cells one of the main cells of the immune system or they are the immune cells now they are meant for these antibodies they are meant for recognizing and neutralizing foreign proteins viruses toxins and other pathogen so these are the antibodies and they attack these foreign proteins or bacteria or viruses and kill them that's how they take part in the immune system now comes the toxins they are both defensive and offensive proteins that are produced by certain animals bacteria and some plants for example snake venom resin of castor bacterial toxin they are all proteins structural proteins proteins constitute more than 50% of dry weight of the protoplast so dry weight is when we remove water from the cell the rest is the dry weight and proteins constitute more than 50% of the dry weight of the protoplast they take part in the formation of colloidal complex of protoplast cell organelles cell membranes and cell products many proteins form supporting structures for example elastin of ligaments and collagen of tendons cartilage bone and connective tissue so elastin and collagen are the proteins which take part in the formation of structures along with proteoglycans proteoglycans these two proteins these two fibrous proteins they form a major component of the connective tissue so connective tissue is made up of elastin collagen and proteoglycans next is compatibility proteins pollen grains possesses specific proteins in their walls for the compatibility and incompatibility reaction with the stigma during the pollination actin and myosin are fibrous proteins 
which form the contractile system of muscles contractile system is basically made up of protein actin but association with myosin is essential for the contraction so the participation of both of these proteins is required for contraction microtubules they are unbranched hollow semi microscopic tubules which form the structural material of cilia flagella basal bodies centrioles and spindle apparatus microtubules are built up of protofilaments they are formed of two related proteins alpha and beta tubulin so this is a tubulin dimer alpha and beta tubulin it is a special protein that is present in the sieve tube elements the protein is vibratile and is believed to actively participate in the transport of nutrients so these proteins are present in the sieve tubes and they are important they take part in the transport of the nutrient there are over 2000 enzymes and except a few all others are built up of proteins alone or in conjugation with some non protein material cofactors so cofactor is the non protein part sometimes an enzyme has protein and protein plus coenzyme that is the non protein part of the enzyme enzyme catalyze all the chemical reactions that occur in the world and the examples are pepsin trypsin ribonuclease flavoproteins etc transport proteins or carrier proteins hemoglobin of rbc's transport oxygen from the lungs to different parts of the body so this is important hemoglobin helps in the transport of oxygen and myoglobin of the muscles stores oxygen and alpha globulin of blood carries thyroxin and bilirubin and beta globulin transports vitamin a d k cholesterol and ions albumin carries calcium and fatty acids so a number of carrier proteins occur in a cell membrane for transporting specific materials to the inside for example glucose and amino acid so these carrier proteins helps in the transport of materials inside next is the storage proteins they occur in milk eggs and seeds to nourish the young ones important protein of milk is casein milk protein is casein and major protein of egg white is is ovalbumin while it is glutalin in case of cereal so the major protein of the cereals is the glutalin while in case of egg is ovalbumin iron storing protein commonly found in animal tissue is the ferritin so ferritin is iron storing protein receptor proteins occur on the external surface of the cell membrane the proteins bind to the specific information molecules like hormones and mediate in the cellular effect generally through the formation of cyclic amp form or specific activators receptors are specific for different hormones for example adrenaline receptor beta adrenaline receptor so these are specific receptors for different hormones protein buffers uh, this is a protein it has a polar sites positive side and a negative side so the polar side chains of the protein can combine with excess acid and base it can combine with excess acid or base thus this helps in keeping the ph constant some hormones are proteinaceous in nature for example insulin insulin regulates sugar metabolism in our body growth hormone of pituitary parathyroid hormone parathormone regulates calcium and 
phosphate transport so these hormones they regulate calcium and phosphate transport most of the repressors of the gene are also proteinaceous in nature and they regulate gene function sweet protein monelin and brazin they are the sweetest chemicals which are natural protein they are some 2000 times as sweet as sugar their use can be a diabetic patient since they are non fattening non caloric and non toxic sweeteners blood clotting proteins fibrinogen and thrombin they prevent blood loss from the injured vessels causing clotting of the blood so these are the proteins which help in the blood clotting and thus prevents the loss of blood antibodies are formed of proteins visual pigments rhodopsin iodopsin are protein pigments respectively present in the rods and the cones in the retina so this is the back of the eye and the retina has cones and rod rod cells they take part in the perception of image mucoproteins are produced by salivary glands and mucus glands of alimentary canal so salivary gland and alimentary canal they form mucus mucus protects the lining of alimentary canal from friction and digestive juices so this is the alimentary canal and this is lined with the mucus membrane and this will this will help protect the stomach from the acid or the various digestive juices that are released in the process of digestion and the examples are gastric mucoprotein is resistant to pepsin digestion other proteins include nucleoproteins they are the proteins that are associated with the nucleic acids dna or rna so they are the in nucleoprotein they are the non protein part or the cofactor human memory is believed to be stored in specific proteins known as memory proteins proteins being multivalent macromolecules they can carry out number of chemical reactions molecular motors are proteins which take part in moving materials inside the cell and their organelles for example kinesin and dynein so this was all about proteins i hope you like the video please subscribe to the channel for more videos